Hello and welcome to World War II TV Conflict on Camera. We are talking about two photos in this show and they are coming up on screen now and they were taken on June the 7th in Normandy in the small hamlet of Cullerville. Now for those watching, Cullerville is referenced in episode two of Band of Brothers, the HBO series. It comes towards the end of the episode when Dick Winters and Nixon are talking and they talk about moving on to the town of Cullerville. Well, Cullerville, I call it a hamlet. It's really just a cluster of one set of farm buildings. It's just between Hiesville and the main road between saint marie de mont and Carenton. It is one of the places that is very hard to find for people visiting Normandy, and I should stress, is private property. Now, what are we looking at? The first photo shows Father Maloney, the chaplain in the 506th, holding a mass on the morning of june the 7th or at least on june the 7th at some point now the photo and the other one were given to me by the owner of the farm he had a series of photos that were taken on june the 6th and 7th and what happened is at some point about 20 years ago a historian who i believe was french may not have been could, could have been belgian turned up and the farmer showed him the photos and he said, they're very interesting. I would like to copy them. And he said, yes, sure. You may take them off and copy them. And the guy took them off to copy them and he never returned. Now those photos have been lost to the midst of time. I don't know where they are. I don't know who had them. I don't know what happened to them. These two photos are ones the farmer found later that he hadn't given to this historian. So these two mercifully survived. Now, Father Maloney was also depicted in Band of Brothers. He's the chaplain you famously see in episode three, the attack on Carenton, the guy with the glasses who is going along seeing to the wounded men and the dying men in the combat for Carenton. Now, here he is in his photo conducting mass. Now, what we can see in the photo is there's a table set out there. There's a, a white cloth on it. He's got his various accoutrements there that the chaplain would have and standing around in front of him are members of the 506th. I say the 506th, there are probably also members of the 326th Airborne Engineers there. There may well be members of the 501st and other units there, but I'm calling it a 506th because the farm that this photo was taken at was also Colonel Sink's first Normandy command post. Colonel Sink, of course, being the commander of the 506th Regiment, and he had three CPs in Normandy, the first here in Cullerville, the second in Angerville au Plan, and the third south of Carenton. Now this photo, again, what we're looking at is we can see Father Maloney, we think it's Father Maloney holding mass there. Uh, there's an officer by the look of it to his left or the left of the table, then there's these other figures standing in front of him. Now the photo is so bad quality, it's really difficult to identify anybody in it. I don't even know for certain it's Father Maloney. What we do know is there were some rather interesting people who were around this farm in Cullerville on June the 7th. Among the people who were there were, of course, some of the Easy Company 506th alumni, people like Dick Winters, Harry Welsh, Bill Garnier. In fact, the farmer told me a story about a 506th trooper vomiting out of the window of his farm because he'd had too much Calvados to drink. And at some time, Many years later, I was in Normandy with Wild Bill Garnier, and he mentioned vomiting after drinking too much Calvados. It may or may not have been the same place. It's also from Cullerville, where Dick Winters, who was just assuming command of Easy Company, went for his solo walk off, the one he refers to in his memoirs, where he went off, I guess, to speak to his maker about the responsibility of leading his men in combat. It's a fascinating story. And people like Chris Anderson, who was one of the major Easy Company historians knows the story, so too does Mark Bando. Other people have referred to this solo journey by Dick Winters, but it's the one where he went out and eventually heard German footsteps on a blacktop road and returned to Cullerville. And this is the journey he made without a weapon. And if anyone has toured with me in Normandy, we have discussed what was going on on this walk. And it's a fascinating insight into Dick Winters' career. But we're here to talk about the photo. So that's the first photo of a mass taking place on June the 7th in Cullerville in Normandy. The second photo was, of course, taken at the same time. It's a different angle. And this time the photographer has moved behind the crowd of paratroopers. And there's a couple of farm carts there and he's facing back at the building. Now, as we look at that building, there's the main building, which is the main farmhouse. 
and there's a window open in dark on the top right. But on the right of that main building is a smaller building that joins up with the first building. And if you drive down the road past Cullerville, you can be on the other side of the walls. You're not allowed to come into the farmyard itself because, as I say, it's private property. But you can see those buildings from the outside from the public road. Now, according to the farmer, according to uh, his recollections, the building in which Colonel Sink spent the night of June the 6th was not the main farm. He went into that open door on the very right of the photo there, up a ladder, and he spent the night in the hayloft or the hayloft above, and that is the milking shed. That's where the cattle would be taken in for milking. And when I was told that, it must have been 15 years ago now, I was really fascinated that Colonel Sink had not got into the main family home, but had chosen to spend the night in just this building on the side. It suggests a certain amount of humility on his part. that He didn't try to force his way in the main house. So the photo we're looking at there is where Colonel Sink, Colonel Robert Frederick Sink, spent the night of June the 6th. But going back to the photo again, and the group of paratroopers are attending mass, I guess there's about 50 or 60 guys in that photo. I've never actually tried to do a head count. As I said with the first photo, we'll never be able to establish the identity of any of these men. I did when I met people like Don Malarkey and Earl McClung and others in Normandy. I did mention to them, do they ever remember attending a mass on the morning of June the 7th? None of them that I spoke to ever recalled it. Now, that may mean they weren't in this group. It may mean it was just one of many events to happen over a busy period of hours and they forgot they attended. I have no idea. Knowing Don Malarkey and how religious he was back then, I would have assumed he would remember attending a mass but he never did as far as I'm concerned. But I thought it would be interesting to present these photos to you. You do see them every now and then in magazines because the same farmer has let other historians have copies of them as he did me many years ago. But I do wish that whoever that historian was who went in there, however many years ago it was, and took away these other photos would at least publish them at some point and do something with them. At least then his, I'm gonna use the word theft, I don't know who he was, would have uh, come to some good in that we would have these photos. And it begs the question, what was in the photos? Who was in them? Do they depict people that we know about? Were they of other people who were at this headquarters on June the 6th? I don't know. And the final story that concerns these buildings, and for the full version of it, I recommend you purchase or get a copy of Mark Bando's brilliant book, Vanguard of the Crusade, about the 101st Air, but it's also in George Kozkimaki's book, um, D-Day with the Screaming Eagles, is the Colonel Sink legendary Jeep drive of June the 6th. This is where he went off with a couple of other guys in a Jeep off from this area, which is near Drop Zone C to Drop Zone D to check on the other part of his regiment. And I won't spoil the ending in this short show about what happened on that journey, but it involved bumping into a German position and a handbrake turn in the road, a Jeep and a drive back to Cullerville. But this, as I say, is Cullerville, a small hamlet in Normandy. It was Colonel Sink's first Normandy CP. It's where members of E Company 506, a few of them spent the night, including Dick Winters, and I believe Harry Welsh, Bill Garnier, Malarkey, other guys like that. And it's where these two photos were taken of a small religious ceremony on june the 7th the day after d-day so there we are it was short and swift this show i hope you've enjoyed what i've had to say about these photos and as i've said on each of these shows if you are a historian or author and you have a world war ii photo you'd like to talk about please drop me a line and come on and talk about the photo thank you very much for watching don't forget to join us on patreon don't forget to share what we're doing here in world war ii with your friends on facebook and twitter i am paul Woodage. Thank you very much for watching.